Welcome, everyone, to another edition of To Your Health, a program designed to bring you information on healthy living, featuring those who make healthy living lifestyles achievable. My name is Fred Zucker. I am your host, coming to you from the Parker University campus in Dallas, Texas. Today, we're going to talk about a topic that is of uh, great importance to me, has been for many years, what I'm calling transitional trauma, predicting stages in the transition from high school to college. I've been in higher education many years, and going back to my early days in the profession, I was assigned a number of college freshmen to be my advisees. This happened time after time, year after year, for many years. And I began to notice patterns in the adjustment of the new college students to to life in college. These were new students, freshmen, coming to a, at that time, private university and living on campus for the most part. They were residential students. And I noticed that they went through the same kinds of experiences, some at different times, but in general, over time, year after year, and this was going from one campus to another, different types of institutions, large, small, public, private, there began to be, a, to me, appearing a, a schema, a, a sort of predictable series of events and, and uh, passages that these new college students made. So I began developing a, a schema of 10 stages that new college students go through in making the transition from high school to college. And I've tried this over the years at different institutions. I've observed other students at different times. This is over a period of maybe 10 to 12 years. And they seem to have remarkable resiliency in terms of the predictability of these, these transitional situations that new college students go to. At the time we're recording this, this program, it's late October. And one reason it comes to my mind is this is about the time when a lot of new college students are going to be experiencing some of the, the major issues of transition to college life, not to mention uh, just being away from home and going through the, the uh, regularly expected kinds of things. Some of these things will take a sort of predictable phase. The first of these 10 stages is what I call post-high school satisfaction, pre-college elation. And this is right after the students have graduated from high school they are through with high school, and many of them are saying, I can't wait to get out of high school. I'm so happy to be through with all the, the silliness of high school senior year. And some of them have experienced senioritis, which means they sort of disconnected from their last uh, month or two of high school. Hopefully they, they made that transition successfully. But now they're in college. They're on the way to college. They've been accepted to college. They're going through the summer situation with their, their friends who are also in the same situation in many cases. They're dealing with uh, the the inevitable departures that they will be making from their friends or what they've known in high school. They're also planning to to leave home and leave their parents and their siblings. And this may be the one time in their lives where their siblings will be happy to help them pack because you know what may happen. They may be moving into that departing student's room once they're on their way to college. So this is when often the relationships with high school students, friends of theirs, become more intense because if there's a, a... romantic relationship that may be under duress because they're going in different directions. Uh, All kinds of things may happen. It's also a time when parents may experience some transitional difficulties of their own. There may be an empty nest situation that's looming, or the the student who's about to depart may find that they are rehearsing letting go. And also they may be sort of bracing at the, uh, the imposition of the house rules on them as they're now post high school on the way to college why should we have to have the same rules, the same uh, house closing rules, that is being on, home on time with curfews or uh, having to do the chores, that sort of thing. That may create some, some uh, difficulties between the parents and the students at this time, this post-high school period. The next stage is what I call early separation anxiety. Right after high school graduation, college still seems a, far, a long way off. It's still far off in the future, so it's not really there. But later, as the summer months progress, it becomes clear that the student is going to have to make the transition and leave home. They're beginning to take care of things like packing and purchasing items that they'll need as new college students living away from home in a residence hall. So it becomes real. The reality of leaving becomes uh, very much in their minds, especially with the departure of friends, some of whom leave earlier than others. Some have to go to summer school on the college campus and, and do other things that may cause them to leave earlier. So the, uh, the, the reality of the situation becomes clearer and clearer to them. And that's when they begin to see this, this transition is really going to take place. 
The next stage is what I call acute separation anxiety. This is when the students actually leave home, say goodbye to parents and siblings and friends who are still at home, arrive on campus, meet the new college roommate, move into their dormitory room, although we don't call them dormitories anymore, we call them residence halls. So this will be a time when all that preparation, all that anticipation comes to realization, comes to fruition. It's also true, and I found this to be the case on every college campus where I've worked, that every college campus has a, a culture, a, uh, an unwritten set of rules that new students have to learn. These are not written in a student handbook. They're not written down anywhere for that matter. But it's sort of, uh, it's known to people who've been there for a while. There's a dress code, for example. The way you dress, maybe dependent upon the climate to some extent, but also just what's in and what's not, what's cool, what's not, that sort of thing. All these things have to be learned by the new college students. Now, most colleges offer orientation programs, which I strongly recommend that the new students participate in because that will give them very important information about how to make the transition a little easier for them. Introduce them to people, introduce them to their residence hall advisors, introduce them to others that they need to know in the residence life staff, student affairs staff, and of course their professors, meeting them for the first time. And I always tell them that the new students, when they, they go to their first classes, be sure and get there early. Be sure and sit down near the front of the classroom. And every time the professor looks your direction, you should do this. You should nod. You should make eye contact and let the professor know that you are paying attention. You want to be in that classroom experience with them, not separated from it, but actually sharing it with them. The next stage is what I call the honeymoon. Now, for so many months, maybe even years, the students have been thinking about the college experience, what it's going to be like. They've been to movies. They've talked to their older siblings or older friends or their parents about what it was like when they were in college. Now, with the parents, it may have been many years ago, but siblings may be right now. There may be a sibling that's already in college and still there. But they're expecting things to be great, to be immediately enthralled by the intellectual life of the college, the social life of the college, the extracurricular life of the college. All these things are expected to be happening right now, right away. The next stage is what I call the end of the honeymoon. After this uh, carefully staged period of new college life, orientation, suddenly there's a drop-off. Things are not happening like they were in orientation. Everything is carefully staged and choreographed. Students are in activities constantly day in and day out for at least two or three days. Suddenly they're going to class. They're in a new schedule. They're in a new reality. Dealing with issues arising from finances, um, issues with roommates, issues with academics, the things that may be the reality of dealing with a bureaucracy come to the fore. That means they've got to deal with it. They've got to take time to manage those issues. And they may be getting their first grades back from quizzes, especially if they're in math and science. And for some very good students, getting a low grade and a low grade may be a B or a C, not an F. That may be a real traumatic experience for those students who are used to getting very good grades with relatively little work. Now they're often in a situation where all the students around them are at the same level academically and intellectually, and they're not the top of the class. For some students, that realization can be a serious setback or awakening for them. It's also a time when many students experience for the first time the symptoms of homesickness. They're, they're missing the familiarity of home and family and friends and just the place of home. They're now in this new place. It's a new world, a new college life campus situation they've never experienced before, at least not in this way. Many of them have been away to summer camps and so on. But this is a lifestyle, living there 24 hours a day, meeting people. It's everything they've got to do. And for many of them, it can be a serious problem. Just the recognition that they're having homesickness for many of them can be daunting. They've never had that before. They've always been able to manage everything and do it successfully. And for many of them, it's embarrassing to be homesick. In some cases, they don't get the help they need to help them overcome that because if homesickness interferes with their number one job, which is being a student, they need to get some help because that can be a setback, especially for a new college student. The next stage is what I call the grass is always greener. About midway through the first year, the student may think, especially if they're having some issues, things are not going well, they think, gosh, if I only transferred 
to that other college that I was considering, everything would be wonderful. That's probably not true, but it certainly is something that will occur to students, especially if they're having difficulties. One of the things I would always advise my students who would come to me and say they were thinking of transferring was, just remember, if you transfer, you may lose priority for course selection, for housing, for financial aid. There may be a lot of things that you give up as a transfer student that you have as a student starting as a freshman at your initial institution. I would say it's better to give the initial college campus at least a year before you make a decision to transfer. And in many cases, the issues that had presented themselves as so daunting will become much less difficult as time goes by and the student learns the new culture, learns the new way of, of doing things at the college or university of their choice. The next stage is what I call you can't go home again. So many students I see in the first year of college, they're counting down the days to Thanksgiving or whatever the first time they can go home might be. <clears throat> they just can't wait to get home. So they're saying one, one more week, one more day, I get home, go home and see, see Muffy, my dog, and my parents and my good friends. So they get home, and it's not exactly the way it was when they left. In many cases, a younger sibling has moved into their room. Someone has taken their place at the table or in the family order. So it's just not quite the same for them. Then they realize, talking to their friends, that those reunions are a little bit strained. Everybody's sort of telling stories about their experience in, in college and what it's like and making up some of that, but often happens. So what often happens is when the new college student has been home for a few days, they begin to realize that it's not so much that things at home have changed, it's that they have changed as a result of being away and being in a new college environment. And sometimes they're looking forward to returning home. And for many of them, that is, that is unsettling to them because they're not used to having that idea. They thought returning home was going to be so wonderful. The next stage is what I call learning to cope. After a month or two, the new student is learning to, to make uh, his way or her way around the college campus. They begin to find out where the library is located, the li hours of the library. They've begun to reach out to a, a larger circle of students uh, beyond the students they met when they went through orientation. In other words, they've begun to expand their, their lifestyle, their, their reach of uh, activities on the college campus. So they're beginning to cope with all the issues that they, they've had to deal with during those first difficult weeks and months of the college experience. The next stage is fear of failure. And so many students experience this, this thing going through, especially at a competitive college academically. Midterm examinations are going on about now in the, in the course of the academic year we're in here at Parker. Uh, students take midterm examinations, and for many of them, that is a, the first introduction to the academic panic of the college experience. Uh, they're not sure about how to study. They're not sure about how to manage their time. All those things can be taught to them. In many cases, colleges offer programs that will help them better understand how to study, how to manage their time, how to organize their, their thinking about preparing for an examination. And in many cases, students who are struggling don't realize they need to take steps to catch up right now before they get further behind. So the best antidote for that, uh, fear, of, that, that the fear of failure is study, going to class, organizing your thinking about preparation for examinations, doing it systematically, all those things will take the, the sharp edge off fear of failure. Finally, what I can say, the, the last stage of the transition is putting it all together. For the new college students, everything is sort of put in boxes. Uh, you go to class, uh, you go to the dining hall, you go work out, you go to sleep. Everything is sort of put in a little box, and you sort of think about things that way. Am I having a social life? I mean, going to be able to go out and have fun? If I, am I going to join a fraternity or a sorority or go out for an intramural sports team? That sort of thing. They're all sort of put into little pieces. By the middle of the first year, toward the end of the first year, students begin to put the whole thing together. All these pieces come into an integrated whole, and it's becoming a lifestyle, not just going here, there, and then coming back to your room, but putting it all together and becoming much more comfortable with yourself and your friends and the environment. So it's not impossible by any means to make a successful transition to college life. Many students go through difficulties, I think of it as a roller coaster ride. Students will go into a valley and be depressed and have issues, and then suddenly they come out of it. Uh, a new grade comes in, which is better. Uh, something socially opens up to them. Unfortunately, when they talk to their parents, which you should do, 
either using social media, telephone, email, text. Stay in touch with your parents and students. Parents, you should stay in touch with your students. But do not, under any circumstances, visit your college student without giving them at least 24 hours notice. Because if you show up unannounced on a college visit, you may find out more about college life than you ever wanted to know. But just remember, ups and downs, peaks and valleys, roller coaster ride, college life is just like that. Those valleys can be pretty depressing, but those peaks can be absolutely wonderful. Take care of your physical health, your mental health, and your academic health. All those pieces together will keep you healthy, make you a good student, give you a great success in college. This has been Fred Zucker at, uh, for Two Year Health at Parker University. Come back and join us again next time. Thank you very much. <music>